Hello and uh, welcome back to Bristol News. Well, uh, what a week ahead. Uh, you'll be deciding then who will be the mayor of Bristol from Thursday onwards. I've been getting close, of course, to the 13 candidates each weeknight on this programme. Tonight is the turn of the sitting incumbent, George Ferguson. Uh, you may have been aware of him. Uh, some call him the Marmite mayor. Others call him a whole lot worse. Uh, to many, though, he is a breath of fresh air as well in getting things done. But will he get a second term? Get your comments and your questions into us in the usual way. Details on screen now, as I say. Uh, welcome to the programme, uh, George Ferguson. Hi, Thanks Steve. For coming in. Um, now then, you're the bookie's favourite. Uh, you have been for quite some time. Are you the people's favourite? I don't know, but it, I found it really disconcerting being the favourite. I was four or five to one against on the day of the election last time. And I prefer to be the surprise than the target. I think I'm everybody's target. I'm up against all the parties, uh, particularly the Labour Party. They've got 70 uh, council candidates all campaigning for their candidate against me. So... It's, uh, I get it, we have to win more hearts and minds to actually win on the ground on the day. It's hearts and minds and, and it's a figurehead. It, it's a mayor, it's a personality position. It's a question, of course, of whether people have bought into the Ferguson personality. Let me just, let me just play a little bit of uh, Marvin Rees. Uh, we talked to him uh, in this section of the programme uh, a few days ago. Here's what he had to say as far as leadership is concerned. Have a look at this. That one of the key features of the feedback we get uh, mm. from Bristol is not that people just want a list of bullet points about what you're going to do. Mm. That's important. But they're also talking about how leadership makes them feel. What is the style? You know, do they feel that they've been included? There's a, there's a well-known African proverb, okay? If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Yeah. And I think there are lots of people who feel things have been done alone and haven't been taken, they haven't been taken along with this ride. They haven't been felt respected at the end of the process. So that's a very important piece about the style of leadership that's on offer. Well, there you are. You've gone fast. You've gone alone pretty much, yeah. haven't you? I mean, Marvin would be having a conversation for the next four years, the way he works. I have been working with others. I've had the first rainbow cabinet that's got a uh, deputy who's uh, a conservative. I've got three assistant mayors who are Labour, Green and Lib Dem. We have worked so well together. I cannot think of a a, a decision that's been taken that has split us badly. We've sometimes had open disagreements. That has what, been what healthy. What decision have they so, made, though, George? Let's, let's, let's pin that one down. What decision have they come up with that you didn't agree with, well, but you've gone along yeah, with? That when we turn up to a cabinet... Give, give us an example. Yeah. OK. When we turn up to a cabinet meeting, we have uh, been through all the issues. Say, I mean, say residence parking. Mm. Yeah, We've been through all the issues, and people can see that... After 20, 30 years of failure to invest in transport infrastructure, the, it isn't an option to go on doing nothing. We've got to take brave decisions. Mm. And I'm never afraid. And what has been brilliant is the way we have, it, across so party, what got these the question, agreements. Though, what have the, the Cabinet come up with as a decision of theirs that you didn't agree with, but that you've gone along with? It's not a matter of the cabinet coming up Are with the... No, no. Look, it's my uh, plan, and then, which is absolutely how it should be, mm. I'm the person who's elected mm. by all the people of Bristol, those who vote. It is, I'm answerable to the people mm. of Bristol. I'm so their mayor. the buck mayor. stops with you, so and you the make the decision. And the buck stops with me. Yeah. I'm to blame for everything. It's quite right that it's the mayor's plan. So in that but, case, no, but, but the cabinet mm. reinforced that decision... They scrutinise it, and and also some of the councillors scrutinise. And this has been a really good process. It's complete nonsense to say that it's dictatorial. Uh, I heard your your introduction. It's total nonsense to say it's dictatorial. It's of course, very very of consensual. Of course, it's yeah. not nonsense. It's yeah, a yeah. perception that a lot of people have got. You brought yeah, up yeah. residence parking. You've said as one of your pledges, uh, coming in, if you get a second term, uh, they'll roll out only if there's an appetite, uh, and that's when you're going to be seeking the relevant councillors and neighbourhood partnerships. Yes. See what they think. Why on earth didn't you do that the first time? Because right? we never, never got it. There would never be the, no, the, this ride, no, would there? Steve, Steve, this city... You're going to consult next time, yeah. but not then. Look, could you just listen? Mm -hmm. This city, for 20, 30, 50 years while I've been here, has failed to get on and make the necessary changes. You need, in a democracy, to have some leadership. People who will take you to a place where you can understand how something works. I believe I've done that. 
And now the biggest complaint I get about parking is why were we left out? So I think... So everybody loves the residence parking now, do they? The majority of people within the residence parking areas absolutely get it mm. and like it. Another one. The noise has gone out of it and all that stupidness with tanks and coffins from Clifton and all, they made fools see, of themselves. This is yeah. also the point, isn't it? You know, where you can come across as a bit patronising, can't you? When, when, when somebody disagrees with you. You sold the 15 council houses. You came on the press the next day. You almost smugly, George, said thank you to the protesters because they gave the, they advertised well, the auction. Now, those well, were the very people who no, are they, struggling with housing. No, no, they weren't. Those were political protesters. They were candidates, including Marvin. It was total economic um, naivety. It was all it set was up. The people with all uh, of the placards were Totally, set up, yeah. totally. We were selling 15. Nine, nine flats, three houses for 3.25 million, mm. as it turned out. We're able to, we're able now, and those were bad access, badly insulated, need money spending on them, impossible to mm. rent at social rents. We're, we are providing we're twice as many in the areas concerned. That is only sensible. We yeah, you, haven't you haven't done yeah. that yet because you still appealed for the land upon which to build those afterwards, didn't you, no, as well? No, you, you said there, if no, anybody's got any land, please come land forward. Is, yeah. But also I'll be providing an extra 20 yeah. through a company we're setting up to provide housing for mm. key workers. I just don't like the way that politics works locally. I think we don't want to go back to that silly old politics I where people that. just you know it's all about the parties and 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 basically people are uh, yeah, they don't have a single purpose. But, but, the, my but, single purpose let's get back, is Bristol. I understand that. I know that. I, I want to move it on loyalties. because but, but this yeah. business of personality and you're saying it's not dictatorial. That's what split people, isn't it? That's why you are this Marmite yep. mayor. That's why you do get the, the flack that you take yeah. because you might have an idea. It might even be a good idea in a lot of people's eyes, but it's the way that you're selling Steve, it and imposing Steve, it that people are arguing with. If you want stuff to take 20 years again, that is the way to do it. Go on having those conversations, those endless, endless conversations. I'm a doer. I spent my life doing projects and this is, to me, a mm. 2020 project. It's, I'm absolutely dedicated to Bristol. Mm. I love the city. I needn't be doing this at this time in no. my life. Have you made, have but you, I believe that I'm doing Have the you right made thing. any mistakes in the last four years, of George? Course what, what, I've what, made what mistakes. What were your big mistakes? Where, where did you go wrong? I think that? there is an element of not explaining well enough in terms of bringing in some of the measures. I've made the, maybe I made the mistake to allow people to think that 20 miles an hour was my idea. It wasn't. I didn't ever say it was, but it wasn't. It was something that was brought in by the previous administration. I they, have, didn't, they didn't want the 20 miles an hour to be on every street in Bristol, did they? What, what, wasn't that a mistake? No, 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 no. it's their plan. Couldn't you have brought I it have in not outside the altered. schools and the, and the, and no, the old people's no, homes look, and that, that sort of thing? That is their story, Steve. It's nothing to do with the truth. I have not altered the plan that I inherited well, why didn't at you? all because it was left to the experts about what's right. And I believe it's right that we create a safer, more livable city. This is not about transport. This is about having a really good city for our mm. kids. And I want a city where everybody feels that they can bring up don't, their family in you safety. Don't feel that the cleaner. weight of public opinion is yeah. so much against that? They're all saying, yeah, we agree with it outside schools or narrow streets or where kids are playing, but on big open roads, it's a nonsense. Isn't that what the majority it's not, it's not on the big open road. Isn't that what, in the, in the bigger but streets, it's, in, it's on every street in Bristol. No, no, it's not. No, 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 no. I mean, it's not. You, I mean, uh, I very seldom drive around Bristol, but I can promise you it's not on most of the arterial mm. roads. It's on the, it's mainly on the residential roads. You drive down roads. the White Ladies Road at four o'clock in the morning, you can be done for doing 23 miles yeah. an hour. Do you know, is that, is they, that, did that test, they did a test <laughs> about when, when it was 30 and when it was 20, mm, and it took right. exactly the same time to get yeah. white, from the top to mm. the bottom. If you think about driving around, if you are in a 20 mile an hour zone and somebody mm. is overtaking at 30, you'll find them stopped at the lights in front of you. Yeah. It makes no difference, the average speed. Let me ask you a couple of quick questions. This, this time has flown. Uh, yeah. If there were to be a different mayor uh, come in, be it Marvin Rees or any of the others, what kind of a Bristol will it be, do you think? Well, I think it would be going backwards to the old politics, which is all about party control. 
it wouldn't differentiate Bristol. It would just make us like any other party-led city. And I know that Bristol has been celebrated, not just nationally, but internationally, because we have a different way of doing things. And I think that's what defines Bristol. Bristol is a bit quirky, and it's the only city that elected to have a mayor, and it's the only city that elected to have an independent And one. the job, as far as you're concerned, is half done. What would it mean to you personally if you didn't win this on Thursday? Well, it'd be disappointing. I'm an architect. I do projects. It'd be a bit like... Um, having a project cancelled just after you got planning permission and you weren't allowed to deliver it. Mm. All right. George, as with all the others, good luck. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you very much, Thank Steve. you very much. George Ferguson, decision is yours. George won, of course, of 13 standing for Mayor of Bristol. Here they are. Uh, you heard them in detail on this programme over the last couple of weeks. Just one to go. Tomorrow night, the Liberal Democrats, Dr Kay Barnard, is in the chair to tell you why she thinks she's worthy of your vote. That is at the usual time. I will see you then. So, from all of us here in the studio, until then, bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>